All right, class, today we're going to talk about photosynthesis, which is, if not the most pro important process on Earth, um, one of the most important processes. It's how all living things on Earth get their energy. And the plants actually do photosynthesis, and then we benefit, and we'll talk more about that. Um, as we finish up talking about the very basics of photosynthesis, we're also going to show the results of our experiment, which is uh, the radishes that were growing underneath the grow lamp that were getting more light for photosynthesis and the radishes that were in the greenhouse and getting some light but not nearly as much and, how, and the comparison on how they were growing. Okay, so what is photosynthesis? Uh, photo means light and synthesis means to make. So we're using light to make energy. So the greatest form of energy on the earth is the sun. So the sun, and please forgive my artistic abilities or lack thereof, but the sun is up in the sky and it's sending down light rays to us. And those light rays are coming in red, green, and blue light rays. Um, the trees are the, whether it's trees or other plants, you see the green leafy parts of the plants. They appear green to us because they're reflecting back the uh, green rays. So we see the green and they're absorbing the red and the blue. So it's actually the red and blue light rays that are uh, producing the energy. So inside the green parts of the plants, there's chlorophyll that creates, uh, start a chemical reaction. And in that chemical reaction, they, they take the energy from the sun, and then you have to have carbon dioxide coming in through the air into the leaves. So we got carbon dioxide in, or CO2. You have water, you need those both of those, those are coming in through the roots, okay, or H2O. So you have water and carbon dioxide coming in, and then the energy from the sun and the chlorophyll is used for a chemical reaction to convert those. And so what happens is the water uh, loses an electron, okay, and then it, that, the rest of it combines with carbon dioxide, which picks up an electron, and that creates the glucose or energy or sugar, it's actually a form of sugar in the tree. So the tree can then, or tree or other plants can then store it in the trunk or in the leaves or throughout in the roots. Any part of the plant can actually store um, the glucose. But then the waste product from the water after an electron is lost is oxygen. So we get oxygen up here that's coming out, and that is also a benefit to us. So photosynthesis not only stores energy in plants that we can end up eating but it also gives off oxygen that we need in the air to breathe. Okay, so how does photosynthesis benefit us and how do we get the energy from it? So I'm gonna throw out a few more uh, technical terms or scientific terms that, that you'll understand them. An autotroph, which is the plant, auto means by itself, uh, troph means feeder, is an, an autotroph creates its own energy. So the plants are creating their own energy through the sun. A heterotroph, hetero means other, it means so it's a, an other feeder it gets its food from somewhere else so all animals including ourselves are heterotrophs we have to get our food from somewhere else so after the plants have stored the energy in them we will, can then pick the part of the plant that's edible to us and eat it and get that energy okay we also you might say well we also eat animals sometimes too how do we get the energy well if an animal eats the plant so for instance uh, a lot of us eat both chicken and beef. So the chicken or the cat are out in the pasture eating the plants, then they're gaining the energy they're growing. We then eat the meat from them and we therefore transfer the energy to us. So um, that would be an example of, we're an omnivore, we eat both plants and animals. So we'll get the energy from both. A cow is simply a, a herbivore and eats only plants. So the cow gets all of its energy from the plants and carnivores are animals that eat only other animals and other types of meat. But indirectly or directly, all of us get our energy from plants and photosynthesis. Okay, besides energy that we get for eating the food energy, we talked about that there's two benefits from it. And the other significant benefit is, uh, we showed it in this diagram earlier, is that uh, there's a big concern nowadays about carbon and being a carbon footprint and too much carbon in the air, too much carbon dioxide, and whether that affects climate change or global warming, it's just not healthy for us as humans to have too much 
carbon in the air. Well, the plants through photosynthesis, they absorb that carbon dioxide and bring it in. And then their waste product, as I mentioned before, is oxygen. So we need oxygen. So when the process of photosynthesis is going on, not only are we gaining food that we get to eat, but the plants are releasing oxygen that we get to breathe and it's cleaning the air and making the environment more healthy. Okay, so a lot of people think that uh, the more sun, the hotter it is, the better the photosynthesis or the greater the process is gonna be. And generally that's true. If you have a garden that's well watered and you're getting a hot summer day, as long as it's not too terribly hot, the radiation from the sun, sun's rays are gonna be great. As long as you have water in the garden, the plants are gonna keep growing really well. But remember, you need sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. If it's been so hot for so long that there's not enough water being drawn up, the plant's gonna quit growing, the photosynthesis is not gonna happen. You have to have water as well as the sunlight. So if you've had too many hot days in a row, it's gonna affect it. Also, it could just be one really hot day, and if the plants, let's say it's a 100 degree day, here in Western Washington, the plants are not used to that. So they have a process where if it gets too hot, they'll actually close their stomata or for lack of better terms, their pores to prevent the loss of, uh, uh, excuse me, prevent the loss of water. So they'll actually uh, do kind of a mini dormancy, close their pores to try to keep their water in. And so photosynthesis is not happening when it gets too hot. So generally speaking around here, the warmer it gets, the better, the more photosynthesis. But if it gets too hot or if there's not enough water, the process gets shut down. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the results of our experiment that we started and how photosynthesis affects it. Um, we're going into the fall, we planted these radishes exactly the same in both plants in late October. We're now three and a half weeks away, we're in mid-November now, and we're gonna see how they grew. So first of all, we have the radishes that we planted and we put underneath a grow lamp. So it was getting the red, green, and blue um, light rays. It was getting the full spectrum and it was left on so they had more hours of the sunlight as well. Okay, the plants over here, these were planted the exact same seed, the exact same soil, the exact same day, but they were just put in the greenhouse without the grow lamp. And you can see, that they are getting sunlight enough to grow. They're getting bigger, but it's gonna be, so the re, this is three and a half weeks later. The other plant has some that are ready to eat. These are gonna probably be three and a half months before we're ready to eat something, but they are growing. They are getting sunlight. They will get larger, but it's, we're gonna have to be patient. And so not only are the length of the day shorter and the grow lamp is still on, but uh, here in Western Washington, it has been raining and raining and raining. So it's been overcast, cloudy days. So even during the day, it's been dark. So there's not been a whole lot of sunlight. There is great sunlight today. And so the plant actually noticeably sprouted up from where it was yesterday. But since it's been cloudy and not getting much light, these are significantly behind these that have been growing under the grow lamp. And so at this point in time, and this isn't even the largest one that was in there, but these are definitely ready to pick and eat and quite good. And there'll be more on my table tonight. While I'm watering my plants, you should know that there is a crossword puzzle in the description below. You can click on the link and get a free word crossword puzzle that goes with this lesson. If you found any value in this, please like, maybe even subscribe, share it to someone you know. Thanks.